Hi, in this video I will present to you the ECOWIT multi-channel temperature and humidity sensor model WH31. The wireless thermometer and hygrometer sensor can be useful extension of our current home weather array as well as a standalone element when we want just to measure temperature and humidity in a specific place and do not intend to buy the entire weather station right away. In my case, the sensor was connected to the previously reviewed HP3501 wireless Wi-Fi weather station by Ecoit, where there are already included two similar WH32 sensors for detecting internal and external conditions. However, up to eight WH31 sensors can be connected to the weather station to trace temperature and humidity in various parts of our home, e.g. in the attic, garage, home pantry, wherever the control of these two parameters is important to us. We can also put sensors outside in the garden as an example. As you can tell, the sensor is packed in a cardboard box and wrapped in foil. Its startup boils down only to inserting two AA batteries. My weather station copy has been adapted for radio communication on the 868 MHz frequency as I live uh, in Central Europe. Its size is small, over 12 cm high, 4 cm wide. The specification mentions that the sensor operates in uh, minus 10 to 60 Celsius degrees, but I determined that uh, the display may below minus 10 Celsius degrees stop showing measurements, but this will be performed up to minus uh, 40 degrees. Above the battery compartment there is a panel with four switches. The first three are used to set the channel number in which the data will be sent. We set them according to the diagram attached in the manual. Here I set channel number two. The switch number four is used to set the temperature units in which data will be collected. Switch in up position means temperature shown in degree, uh, Celsius degrees. After connecting the battery, the sensor will display temperature, relative uh, humidity and the number of the set channel. Each transmitter can be assigned only one separate uh, channel. The sensor itself itself uh, has a hole for hanging on the wall or looping around it. However, when we want to place it outdoors, it is advisable to put it in a radiation shield, mount, mount the unit under any cover, uh, owning or elsewhere. If you want to place the sensor indoors, remember do not install it it uh, in a location where a nearby radiant heat source, radiator, heaters, etc. 
will affect it. Also, the sun's rays uh, should not fall on the transmitter through the window. As the sensor will be located outdoors, it is necessary to provide shade uh, throughout the day. The best uh, solution here is to put it under a radiation shield, but effective protection entails higher costs uh, spent on high quality shield. Direct sun sunlight uh, falsifies uh, measurements. I decided to show you why this is so important. One September afternoon, a sensor in the shade of a tree showed 22.3 degrees after putting it in the radiation shield and expose, expose it uh, to full sun. The temperature jumped to 24.7 degrees after 5 minutes. When I exposed the temperature sensor alone to the sun with, without any cover, the measured value increased up to 27.7 degrees. Therefore, sensible measurements only make sense if we provide the right sun protection conditions. ECOWIT took into account the suggestions of users in this regard and uh, has just introduced its uh, own radiation shield. As you can see, it is well designed to WH31 and 32 sensors and allows airflow through the shield to enhance the accuracy of daytime temperature readings in, the, in full sun. I don't have it at home now, so I don't know yet uh, how effective this protection is. An additional temperature sensor can be useful for fruit growers, gardeners or farmers. Here you can see a small vegetable garden with pumpkins, carrots, tomatoes and so on, and an orchard with a few fruit trees. In the autumn it may be useful to measure ground temperature, i.e. at a height of about 5 cm above the ground, to monitor the approaching ground frosts, possibly to cover the sensitive plants we grow. So I decided to attach the sensor to a small apple tree and make measurements here. The signal quality is sufficient despite the distance of about 30 meters from the console and the GW1000 Wi-Fi gateway. There is even an outbuilding along the way, but the data is still collected without interruptions. Even when I moved away with the sensor 200 meters from the console, the signal was still received. So I was impressed by the strength of the high quality signal transmission. The location just above the ground also allows you to check the precision of the temperature readings. First, a comparison the transmitter with a calibrated Thermio 31 logger. The indications are similar, which proves good sensor accuracy. It sends data even every minute. So it is not so sensitive as thermal logger with a probe that reacts to temperature changes every few seconds. However, for home purposes, the WH31 sensor measures the temperature accurately and you can rely on it. The first ground frost of the second week of October was a kind of a test of its performance. In the early morning, the sensor indicated minus 0.4 degrees at 5 cm height. As you can see in the photo, the grass was slightly frosted, so it must have been a negative temperature right there. At 2 meters above the ground, the WH-32 sensor from HP-3501 weather station showed plus 0.5 degrees and in fact, the dew on the higher objects was not frozen. Ecoid equipment is flexible enough that you can freely choose particular sensors you are interested with. If you only wanted to have the WH31 temperature transmitter and you wouldn't, wouldn't like to buy the complete weather station, you can buy the, the GW1000 Wi-Fi gateway and trace the measurements on your phone on the WSView application as well as on ecoweed.net. It allows you to send weather data to popular weather station services like Weather Underground, WeatherCloud.net, Weather Observations website uh, pwsweather.com and publish 
your readings on your website. All we have to do is to connect the gateway, the Wi-Fi gateway to the USB slot 2.0 or higher standard. An additional cabled uh, probe is attached to unit and you uh, and so you can also measure indoor temperature, pressure and humidity. We make the entire device configuration on the screen of our mobile phone. We need just to install the WSView application, select the device with which we want to connect. In my case I have a choice of HP 3501 console or just GW1000 gateway. After clicking the panel of current data pops up where we have all sensor readings uh, that communicating with the uh, gateway. An additional uh, WH-51 sensor works on channel number 1, here as uh, CH1. In my setting um, showing the temperature and humidity here above the ground. We can also look in another window, all active sensors, the strength of uh, the signal with which they connect to the gate, gateway, but also the level of battery charge. As you can see, there is a space for up to 8 WH-31 sensors. Similarly to the console, we have the option of setting data transfer parameters to the ecoid.net, whether underground, whether cloud, whether observations uh, website platforms. In the customize section, we can configure the path where the data file should be sent to the server according to the ECOID protocol. That way, we can also publish data from additional sensors on our website. Currently, as far as, as, far as I know, it is possible using the Meteo template and the plugin written for this purpose by Raffaello Di Martino. On my website, in addition to the basic set of weather parameters, internet users also can monitor um, data from the WH-31 sensor, i.e. temperature and humidity measured at 5 uh, cm height. Ecoid.net data server has very nice presenting data, that's why I visit that page frequently. Measurements from an additional sensor can be seen as another tile on the data panel and on the graph with the minimum and maximum values marked. If you already have a console from the HP 3501 weather station, after connecting the WH-31 sensor it will be automatically recognized and its readings will be shown on the console display as the only data or alternatively with the WH32 sensor readings. If you connect the console via USB to the computer, the EasyWeather 2.com program will show additional data on the right in the table. As you can see, however, the ecoid.net weather server has a much nicer graphic design and it also allows you to export data as a file format used to store tabular data. To sum up, the WH-31 sensor is accurate device that gives you reliable measurements and offer the opportunity to expand your home weather sensor array. It can also operate separately with an additional GW1000 Wi-Fi gateway that allows you to track the measurements on the mobile phone and send your readings to online weather databases. At the same time, it is cheap, but you have to add uh, transport costs uh, from China and possible customs duties. I hope you enjoyed the video and I clarified some doubts. Thank you for your attention and I invite you to follow next reviews.